Hey everyone, welcome to another vlog in my series. I am Boomshaka and my brand is The Millionaire Hippie. And today I'm just going to talk to you about some general stuff that's going on. Um, recently, basically yesterday, I went to an improv workshop. And this is something that I would never, ever in my life would have done. I mean, in my past life, in the, the past Boomshaka, she would never have ever maybe had the courage or have taken the time to do something that she wanted to do, which wasn't monetarily, you know, advisable. Because <laughs> um, in the past, I would always be doing things that would give me money in some sort of way. I mean, that would pay me in some sort of way. And if it wasn't something that paid me, I would actually feel like I was wasting my time. Very much a type A personality. I still am, and I'm, I'm just still learning. I'm just trying not to be as much. But I think what happened with me is that just the fact that I was brave enough to quit my job and start my online business, something that I've been wanting to do, like I've said, for a long time, but finally I had the courage to step up and do what I needed to do. So quit my job, tell my parents, have the courage inside of myself, you know, my heart, believe that I can do something with it, believe that not only do I have the capability to do it, but also the fact that even if I don't succeed, at least I tried. I mean, not that I'm not going to succeed because I know what I'm doing and I know that I'm going to keep at it until I succeed. But because I had that, the courage to take that step after so long, because I've been wanting to do this for so long, right, and I haven't done it. So the fact that I had the courage to do it, I think kind of propagated courage in other aspects of my life. So I became braver not only in the fact that I'm an entrepreneur and I'm doing t doing stuff in my business, I'm talking to people all the time. In regards to my business, I'm going online and I'm going on podcasts and being interviewed about, about meditation and doing guest posts, things that I would have in the past been shy of because I wouldn't have believed in myself enough. Now I, I do believe in myself. And that one step has kind of brought other brave tasks into my life. So not only have I been able to quit my job and start my online business, but from that I was able to move to Chiang Mai, you know, um, get this apartment that I'm living in for the next six months. This would have, this was not in my scope of what I was going to do even a month, two months ago. This idea just came to me, to I think, to one and a half, two months ago, or less than that. So it wasn't even something that was in the, in the top of my head, but because I was brave enough to take these risks, I knew that I would be able to take this risk of moving to Chiang Mai and doing what I needed to do without any fear. I'm, I'm saying this not because I want you to applaud me for my bravery. I'm saying this because once you do one task that is something that is a stretch goal for you, something that's very risky in your opinion. And that was for me quitting my job and starting my own business. It was extremely stretch for me. I was extremely scared. Um, my heart would, I mean, I could not even imagine doing it. It was, it was one of those things where I was afraid and I didn't want to. I, I, I would walk around all day long talking to myself saying, why am I doing this? Why do I have to do this? Why can't I just stay in this 9-to-5 job? It's a good job. It pays me really well. It pays all the bills. Why do I have to take this step? Why do I have to take this risk? And I would berate myself for it because I, I could not not take this step. It was something that was really important to me. And that really scared me. And it was tiring, exhausting, mentally and physically because I had to do it. But I was resisting. You know, the book War of Art is is the book that I read in order to get over the resistance because I knew that this resistance was because I was afraid and I needed this for the evolution of my soul. This move to Chiang Mai as, far as, as well, it was scary. To have that conversation with my parents to tell them I'm leaving for six months and to hear them say all the things that they would say and for them to, you know, say all the negative things, all the positive things, all the just tell me that I'm making a wrong decision. 
by believing in my heart that I'm doing the right thing. And that every single step that I'm taking, especially in this year, there have been people who've been telling me, you know, you're doing the wrong thing, or, you know, you're going to regret this decision, or whatever it might be. But the only reason I've kept on going is because I believed in my own heart that this was the right decision. And my gut, my instinct, my intuition, my conversation with the source, with the universe was telling me this was the right decision. And every single time, even if everyone else has been telling me, you're making the wrong decision, if I believed in my heart that it was the right decision, I went ahead with it. And that is my goal to keep on going with what my heart tells me to do, what my intuition is telling me to do, rather than what the world is telling me to do. Because it is so easy to listen to the world and just go along with what they tell you to do. But it never, ever is what you truly want to do. It's never what your heart is telling you to do. Maybe in rare cases it is, but really, most of the time it isn't. And that's the reason there is this disconnect with most people where they should be living a certain life. They should be living whatever they're supposed to be doing. That's their dream. But in reality, because they've listened to the voices outside of themselves, they haven't taken that step in order to live that dream life of theirs, in order to do the things that they're supposed to be doing. And that causes so much sadness and misery in this world. A lot of people, I think, I believe the reason why they are numbing themselves with shopping or alcohol or drugs or junk food or television, whatever it might be, is because they haven't been listening to their heart and they need to numb their heart because their heart, your heart, your intuition will keep on speaking to you until you listen to it. Eventually it'll die off, but it takes a long time. Your intuition is extremely powerful and it's extremely persistent. It wants you to live the life you're meant to live. And it'll keep on telling you what that is. It'll keep on poking at you over and over again until you actually take the step that's necessary. But because we don't want to listen to those voices, we're afraid of those voices because that means that we have to take responsibility for our lives and start living our lives the way we want to. We can't complain about things anymore and we can't say that, you know, we're, we're not, you know, incapable of it. We are actually in control and as soon as we realize that fact, we actually have to, have to take action and we're afraid of taking action. We'd rather complain, we'd rather criticize, we'd rather numb ourselves. So we numb ourselves with all of these different distractions and so our heart is still speaking but it's speaking in a softer voice because we're you know drugged up or we're high or we're drunk whatever it might be but the heart never stops speaking it'll keep on telling you what you're supposed to be doing no matter what happens on the outside no matter how much you try to numb yourself you'll still hear it it might be really faint but it'll still be there eventually eventually like i said it'll die off but it takes a long time and i don't really think you want it to die off i want i think you want your intuition to keep on speaking to you because it's important. Your intuition is telling you what, what you're supposed to be doing. And so with that risk, that first risk that I took, the risk begets risk. So the more risks you're able to take, the more your spirit, your soul, your mind, whatever you want to call it, the braver it gets. So you take one risk and then your spirit says, I can do this. I, I did that one thing and I never thought I'd be able to do it. So if I can do that one thing, I can do this as well. And then you take one more risk. And then you realize, oh my God, I did that as well. Like, I am amazing. I'm powerful. And then you take one more risk. You, know, you keep on going with it over and over and over again. And with that, you end up in Chiang Mai, living in a department for six months. Meeting all these amazing people. Meeting other digital nomads. Meeting other people who are doing amazing things with their life. Who are actually living in Chiang Mai for months at a time, years at a time. So many amazing things that would never have come if I hadn't taken that first step of a risk, you know. The thing is that I was living a really good life. I am a lucky individual and I had a really good life. I had a really good job with a great boss. And so it would have been easy for me to stay. It would have been extremely easy for me to stay because it was a good life. I lived in a beautiful condo down I lived in a beautiful condo downtown, Toronto. 
I had a great job. It paid all my bills and more. I was comfortable. I had you know, a bicycle that I loved. I have, had beautiful friends that I lived with and spent time with. My family was really close to me. And so it was a comfortable existence. But that doesn't mean that that was the only existence for me. In this existence right now, it is comfortable still. It's extremely comfortable. Not as comfortable as the one in Toronto, for sure, because it is a developing country and there are pitfalls here. I mean, there are other things that you have to deal with, but still an extremely comfortable existence here. I have a beautiful apartment. I can walk to all the places I want to walk to. I can rent a bicycle if I want or a scooter. I have water, I have food, um, I have internet. You know, I have a really comfortable existence here as well. A different kind of existence, though, with a few more challenges. And in that, I'm able to bring more risk into my life. You know, because I was able to move to Chiang Mai, I was able to do this. That means I can do other things as well. And so I took an improv workshop yesterday. Something that I would never have done before. Never. I, I'm not even joking. It's, it would have not been in the scope of my thinking, my, my capabilities. It just would have not been brave enough. In fact, that I went, I was scared as hell. I mean, I was so scared that everyone could tell I was scared. But I went and I did it. And I'm going to go again next week and I'm going to keep on doing it because it is going to stretch me. It's going to improve the bound, increase the boundaries that I have for myself. So that this is what I thought my boundary was here and now I'm stepping forward beyond that boundary and I'm extending it. And then I'm going to extend it further and I'm going to keep on extending it until, you know, I mean, there are no limits. You can just keep on doing this for the rest of your life. Another thing that has been coming up a lot in my mind is I really want to start singing. And I, I know it's really odd. I've never, ever had this desire before. But from all the speaking that I've been doing on these podcasts and these videos, I mean, I've been realizing that I have this voice that I really want to express. And I love music. I love, you know, songs. And I, I think that they're a great means of expressing an individual's creativity. So what I want to do is learn how to sing and play an instrument with it. And so I've been looking at the ukulele because it's a fun instrument, it's silly, it, you know, it's versatile, it's small, I can carry it around with me. In a lot of ways, it's actually the ideal instrument for me, especially as a digital nomad. I'd rather not carry a huge guitar around, or definitely not a drum set. So I've been thinking about it. And again, the fear crops up, you know, why am I doing this? What am I doing in my life? Why? Why can't I just be happy with what I have and what I'm doing in this moment? And that thought comes up over and over again. Why can't I just be happy here right now? And I am happy with what's going on right now. I'm absolutely ecstatic. It doesn't mean that I'm satisfied. I'm always trying to push myself. And so a next step in my journey would be to buy ukulele and learn how to play it and sing. And again, there's a lot of fear that comes up for me for that. For some reason, I'm afraid to sing. I feel like once I open up my vocal cords and my throat chakra, there's a lot of stuff that's going to come up, and I'm afraid to see what's going to come up. Doesn't mean I'm not going to do it. Again, doesn't mean if you have a fear, you let it, let the fear stop you. You feel the fear, and you do it anyway. That's what they say, right? Feel the fear and do it anyway. The thing that we, the thing is that most of us believe that all of those people who are successful, they never feel fear. They're like superhumans who are, you know, just devoid of fear. And that's absolutely not true. It's a myth that we tell ourselves because we want to put ourselves down and we want to believe that we're not capable, as capable of these, as these successful individuals. It's not true. These individuals, every individual on this planet feels fear. Every individual feels resistance. It's what they do with it which is important. What do they do? Do they keep on going? Or do they let the fear stop them? Do they let the resistance stop them? Obviously, they are successful because they, don't, they feel the fear and they keep on going. They feel the resistance and they keep on going. They know it's going to come up. They're prepared for it and they keep on going. They keep on going. And so I want you guys to realize that I am not braver than you. No one else is braver than you. You know, no one else is 
There's no one on this planet who's not feeling fear. Every single person, even if they're at the pinnacle of success, even if they've been doing this for a billion years, even if they are, you know, at the top of their profession, they're still feeling fear. It's there. It's just who we are. We're human beings. It's a fight or flight response. This is how we deal with the universe. And what they're doing is that they keep on going. And I want you to do the same. I want you to feel the fear and keep on going. No matter what it is about, you know. It might be something to do with uh, a hobby that you have or some dream that you have. You, know, you, want, you might want to get into acting, but you're afraid. You might want to get into, I don't know, rollerblading, um, snowboarding. Um, I have no idea. There's a billion things that people want to do. That your dreams are going to be completely different from my dreams. are going to be completely different from someone else's, right? So you need to figure it out. What are those dreams that you are stamping on for yourself, that you're telling yourself that you're not capable enough of doing? And take that first little tiny step towards it first little tiny step don't worry about the result don't worry about what's going to happen don't worry about what's the product going to be no matter what you're going to be doing at the end don't worry about the logistics of it just take that first step for me uh, that first step was writing 1500 words a day for my book going to an improv workshop and then for the ukulele, it will be going to go buy a ukulele. And I've already found a store because that's how the universe works. I walked past a store while I was on one of my walks. And I looked in and I found out that it will be 1200 baht. I can probably negotiate it down to 1000 For this beautiful piece of instrument made of wood, it's absolutely gorgeous. And in my past life, I would have said, no, I am not worth that forty dollars for that ukulele and it's so sad to think of it that way you know it's just so sad that in the past I would not have given myself this gift of forty dollars of a ukulele and a little bit of time to learn it and I just I, I, I feel sad for that old Shaka because she wasn't able to do that for herself that means though that I'm gonna learn from it and now I'm not gonna let it happen again I'm gonna keep on going and I'm going to give myself this gift of this ukulele and I'm going to play it and I'm going to learn how to sing. And if I am the most horrible singer on this planet, it doesn't matter. That's not the point. The point isn't the product. The point is the process. The process of actually doing it. The process of actually doing the creative work. The process of letting yourself be creative and be silly and do the work. You know, it's the, the, the work that matters, not the end result. And if I'm able to play one song and sing one song by the end of this month, I would have achieved what I wanted to achieve, which is play and sing. And the, maybe that's the end for me. I'll do that and I'll be like, okay, I'm done with it. I don't want to do this anymore. I'll find something else. That's totally fine. It doesn't mean that if you start something that you have to completely end it. You know, you have to do this for the rest of your life. We are experimenting, experimenting here. You know, we're human beings are creative, and we're always trying new things out. We're taking risks. It doesn't mean that you need to do this for the rest of your life. It does not mean that at all. Let other people say that you're inconsistent or you are not committed. Let them say or use the words that they want to use against you. It's none of their business. None of their business at all. What matters is you. And what are you doing with your life? And how do you feel about it? And if it feels right, and if it feels good, then do it. Who else matters in this planet except for what you're thinking about yourself? I'm not saying that, you know, that you're an island, blah, blah, blah. I'm just saying that other people don't know what you're going through and what, what you're looking for. They have no idea. How can they know what's inside your heart? Right now, there is this thing inside of me that tells me I want to go play it and sing it. It's telling me very urgently, and my heart is really in every moment saying go buy one and go start how to sing and go learn how to sing and play it it's saying that in every single moment no one else knows this no one else can feel it i feel it and that's all that matters and if everyone else says oh you just tried it for a month and that's it that's just so stupid or that's just so inconsistent whatever doesn't matter it's none of their business what you're doing with your creative stance all that matters is what you're doing with yourself 
And in my opinion, if I tried even for a month and I loved it and I, I am able to play one song and sing, that will be worth every single penny that I spent on it, every single moment I spent on it, every single breath that I spent on it. It will be absolutely worth it. It might result in something more, it might not. That's not the point. The point is I tried it, I took a risk, I followed my heart, which is most important, and I let it happen. You know, and I wouldn't have passed by that ukulele store if the universe wasn't trying to encourage me and tell me, go for it, Shaka. This is what you're supposed to be doing. And it wouldn't have happened if I was not so certain that this is what I want to do. So you know what I'm saying? Keep on going at it. So I've, I've talked a lot and I hope that this helps you. I'm just trying to share some of my own stories and journeys and my own thoughts. There's so much going on with creativity. There's so much going on on this planet. And I want to make sure that I share my journey with you. you know, there's so much I'm doing right now. And I hope that this helps you. If you guys have any any questions at all, anything that you want to talk to me about, any messages you want to send me, anything you want to ask me, please go ahead. Message me anywhere, anytime. Again, my name is Boom Shaka. And if you guys are interested, you can join my free Facebook group, The Millionaire Hippie Club. If not, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye for now.